And the Snoop say these streets is crazy. Man. What do you know when I'm asking this because, you know they, uh, because they, they were trampled on an NWA song? song. But what, do what do you know about the Watts 103 Street band? band. Oh, I think uh, I'm saying that right. Yeah, that's uh, Charles Wright. Mm -hmm. Charles Wright, a buddy of mine. Um, Charles Wright got rich off that shit, okay? Me and Charles was laughing about that shit. He can't. He's, he's come to my club, Club Hall of Fame. I know I sound like a goddamn either old motherfucker or a lying motherfucker. I love you, yo. I, I ask you if I give you a name and you fucking know the guy. I know the motherfucker. I got the nigga. I'm, I'm a. Hold on, let me see something. I might have a nigga phone number. <laughs> hold on, let me see. I've always wanted to know about this group, but here we are. Do I have the nigga number still? Uh, no, nah, I ain't got it. Hold on. No, I don't have his number. Um, he used to come to my club on Hollywood Park Casino all the time. And, uh, he do shows up there. You know, he do a show. He just sing out impromptu. I'd have, a, I was doing a birthday thing with Kevin Nash. He was in the house. He coming in, you know, do his thing. This little off, this little off key style of singing. And, um, he and I became buddies because we, for a while, we were both getting a lot of accolades. From different organizations we'd always be on the same stage getting uh getting trophies and plaques or whatever the case may be and uh i used to keep his number but he was a player cool brother real cool brother okay, okay. kevin nash tell us about kevin nash <laughs> that's my dog <laughs> radio legend radio legend me and kevin nash this is crazy man because kevin nash reminded me of this shit right here I, when I met Kevin Nash, he was 15 years old on the radio in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Okay? Wrecking Crew was hot as fish grease. We're touring a... Uh, we're, we're on tour down south, and we're playing with Cool Mo D, Zap, and somebody else. And we had the hotter record with, with Turn Off the Lights. At, not, I mean, not Turn Off the Lights, but uh, uh, Lovers was our big record at the time. And I remember my boss telling me, my, my manager, hey, we got to go talk to this young kid. This DJ phenomenon, this kid got the deepest voice in radio, blah, blah, blah. And I, this dude's 15 years old, talk a grown ass man. He sounded he sound like he sounded right now at 15, okay? And we, I met him, we hung out for a minute, blah, blah, blah. And I think he emceed the show. And when, um, and I was, you know, time passed. And then uh, I, go to K, I go to KGLH and I was doing something. And he was like, You don't remember me? Like, no, nah. he's Lake Charles. Keep talking, man. I interviewed you guys on the on the show. Like, no, what the fuck? I'm Kevin Nash, and then, then all the shit came back. Like motherfucker. So we both Gemini's. So we hit it off. And um, when I was at Club Hall of Fame, uh, Kevin was a very uh, very Bible based brother, and he would do these shows, and he would do the uh, some kind of religious readings or whatever on his radio show at night, and he developed a big female following for doing this. Okay. And I would do the Kevin Nash birthday bash at Club Hall of Fame, the Hollywood Park Casino, and I'd give away tickets on Kevin's show. And it would, literally, it would be 20, 30 women at the club looking for Kevin carrying Bibles, okay? Looking to, I'm not bullshit. I'm not bullshit, okay? And there would be 20, 30 women waiting for Kevin, carrying Bibles, and it got to the point when he first, when he first started doing it, he would try to he, he would try to talk to all of them. You know, he's a good dude. He tried to you know communicate, sign an autograph, or take a picture, but it would take him sometimes two hours to leave the club because everybody wants to read a scripture to him, take a picture, <coughs> and it was nerve wracking to him. So then he realized one day that there was a uh, we had a fire escape, and uh, he, he he would slide down the fire escape, and uh, after he do the he do the birthday thing, I'd pay him and whatever, and. Uh, I was like, I gotta go. And where you going, Kevin? He goes to the back behind the stage. I didn't know that was a fire escape because he told me about it. My cousin Vanetta, she told him about how to get out of there without being harassed. And sometimes I'd go up to the front of the room, uh, front front of the club to get a, a money drop or whatever. There he is right there. No, but I'm not Kevin Nash. We both were ball headed. Okay. But he's light, he's lighter than I am. So I got accused. Of, and one lady argued with me. I'm not Kevin. Yes, you are. Yes, you. I'm not Kevin Nash. Oh, it was crazy. It was crazy. Good brother. Talk to him all the time, and uh, it's all good. I love that. I love these old radio stories, man. Um, you know what? Can you go through the process? You talked about, you know, paying Kevin Nash, but can you go through the process of 
how you paid an artist back in the day when you were promoting? I know you had Run DMC come through. I mean, you've had a lot of big name artists, even the smaller ones. Like what, what was the process from start to finish on how you paid? Did you have a contract? Like what was the, talk to us about that. Me and Kevin never had a contract. We had a handshake deal. Okay. Uh, I've always had a put, I've always had a good reputation when it came to people, but I'm an artist. Okay. I'm not going to screw another artist. Okay. I, if I got to go to the ATM, you're going to get your money, man. And that was one of the things that it kind of got, got the word got out of me a long time ago. If you work with Lonzo, you're going to get paid. Okay. And uh, me and Kevin cut the deal on the phone. What the, it wasn't a bunch of emails and stuff like that. I went to KJLA. I said, man, I want you to come by the club on Friday nights. He said, I hook it up with, my, with the sales department. I'd buy the advertising. He'd come through. He'd do his part. And um, in the night, we're doing a handshake. He got his money. He, he go. What no envelopes? We're just doing a handshake. Keep on going. Uh, working with Run DNC, I had to go through uh, Russell Simmons. You know, I had to uh, track down um, profile with the profile records and uh, the label hooked yeah. me up with Russell. And me and Russell talked on the phone, and he told me, you know, I actually it was Curtis Blow, and I did a deal with Curtis Blow, and uh, he Russell also managed Curtis at the time, and uh, it was half half the half fifty percent. He go your money, yeah. Back, back then, you had the Western Union the money. And then uh, when they got here, you get get arrested in cash before they hit the stage. That's the deal. I, I, I that's what that, that's what I that's what I was accustomed to as a DJ. I got half my money up front, and the rest at twelve o'clock. Or when I, sometimes if I didn't know you, when I turned my system on, and it was working. I got to get paid, and I ain't got time not to get paid. to chasing you around the dance floor at two thirty looking for my money because that was notorious. People were notorious for that shit. Once you've done your job. They get too busy. Everything else is more important than paying your ass. When, they, when you show up, you ain't there on time. They outside waiting for your ass, looking at their watch. But as soon as the dance over with, especially if they ain't make no money, they get real busy. I got to go take care of this guy. Give me my motherfucking money, okay? <laughs> Chris says, uh, oh, boy, Lonzo mad at Run for throwing his mics on the ground. <laughs> Run, <laughs> drop the mic. <laughs> Be off to the highest level of festivity. And the motherfucker still drops mics to this day. In fact, I, I just heard, uh, I saw Red yesterday that he's they doing their last show um, this year. They retiring. They retiring the mic drop. Yep. Damn. They retiring the mic. Classic group. Yeah. Yeah. Classic group, man. Shout out to the uh, audience out there. Please hit that like button. And like I said earlier, if you are not uh, part of the channel and you like what you are hearing, you are listening to Alonzo Williams, the godfather of West Coast hip hop. Do your Google search and go down that rabbit hole. His story is amazing. His tentacles touch every aspect of West Coast hip hop. He surprises me every single week with someone else that he knows. No bullshit. This is all true stories. NWA stories with Lonzo. Tell us about uh, your show with uh, Dre on Fridays, Lonzo. Me and Dre, boy, we've been going at it the last couple of days. Dre, a, he's a very, very big-hearted love person. I'm like, bullshit, Dre. That's some bullshit right there. So we've been bumping heads, but it's a good bump. It's a good head bump. We always, we, it, it, we end up laughing about this shit, man. It's, uh, we got Miss Bernadette. She chimes in with us. And uh, it's a cool show, man. I enjoy doing it with him because he got an East Coast perspective. And he, and he got a um, different pers perspective overall. You know, like I said, he, you know, he's love, love. We got to show some love, man. Show somebody some Put some foot in somebody's ass, you get a lot more, get get their attention a lot faster, goddammit. Sometimes a good kick in the ass will get the sports attention worth faster than a whole lot of love. So I'm so old when it comes to that shit right there. Kicking the ass and get gets what? Oh yeah, I figured you heard me the first time. <laughs> facts, man. Facts, dude. And before we leave, we gotta uh send a uh, prayer out to Marlon's mother. Mom. Um, you know, yeah, man. I know, I know the the what it's like to have a sick parent. So I just, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna definitely uh, do some extra, sending you some extra love and good vibes yeah. on my end. I know Lonzo's gonna do the same, man. We love you, dude. Yeah, much love to you, Doc. Much love to everybody in the chat room. I, my mama died. I, I did, I dealt with that, and I was 19, man. Ooh, we... my mom died uh, right after high school, and uh, I was a designated, her designated transportation to and from her uh, chemo treatment. And we got we we actually got real close on them rides back and forth, you know. And I think the one thing that we didn't do uh, as a family was tell my younger brother that she wasn't going to be all right. My my younger brother didn't know she was dying, and uh, nobody told him. And one day she died. He fucked him up. Fucked him up. 
Okay. Whole nother story, man. He, 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 he wanted to keep your head up, Doc. That shit yeah, is and if there's anything yeah. we could do, Marlon, even if it's it, me personally, you know, even if it's um, monetarily, because you've just been a great supporter of the show. If you do a GoFundMe or anything, just you, you can definitely count on, on our support, man. Love you, dude. Yes, sir. I lost my pops less than a year ago, so I'm, I'm I'm feeling a little sentimental on that. But Lonzo, I love these shows, man. I love the every Tuesday dropping those gems, dude. Giving us some grown ass men enlightenment. And what was the old one again? Uh, old outlive dumb shit. Out, I'm gonna start using that, dog. Outlive dumb shit. Yes, I'm old. I outlive dumb shit. God damn it! So that, you take think about that for a minute, man. If you can get through the dumb shit years, you can get through any damn thing. Okay, seven. Well, I, I'm gonna say. 15 to shit damn near 30 now is dumb shit. <laughs> 15 to 30, you got about you got about 15 years of dumb shit, dumb shit years. You might get some sense if you're lucky, if you got somebody kicking you in the ass and keeping you on track. And that was my thing. I already had somebody kicking me in the ass. I was a crazy motherfucker too. But I had some, I had two old dogs kicking me in my ass every chance they got. They kept my club and just my 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 life on. <laughs> Nigga, I'll kill you. <laughs> I'll kick you up. Jeff D, hey, man, so when you guys, when somebody got something on you, I read something my brother, buddy of mine said the other day. A good father does not have to beat his son. The, 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 uh, the, the, the pride, if you, if you love your kid, love your son enough and show him the right way. Thank if, you. If steps out of line. The thought of disappointing you will fuck him up more than an ass woman. Whooping his ass. Okay. I haven't had to. I whooped my son's ass one time when he was like five, and it was that's that's it. Like I, it's a mental thing, man. My dad got me twice in my life. My my baby boy, I think I got him uh, maybe two or three times, but he got the message quick. Okay. Quick. Even, that's, even that's now, that's all it took. Even now, when I talk to him, when he does something I don't like. I explained it to him, and he'll get it the next time. I said, "Bro, why I gotta do that every week, man? You, you're a grown ass man. You should be doing this." Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, pop. And it, 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 he it gets it. And my my youngest, my my oldest son, I got him a little late. He had to get some retro ass whoopings, but it, eventually it it became the same situation. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mother, man, game. Mother's over spanked out of frustration. Okay. Mother gets mothers get frustrated and they'll kick my, my daddy probably ain't effing around. Daddy's probably not around. That's another big deal. Right. right. Mothers, a lot of mothers, uh I, I read a thing the other day that said that um a large percentage of men in prison come from single family homes. But those yeah. who come from single family homes rape it or was um there's less men in jail raised by dads and single dads than there are single mamas. Single mama. A lot of cats go to jail. Single dad, no, it, no, dad, dad's no better. Okay, it ain't happening, man. We've been cool. so important. We know how to, we know how to, we know how that light feel on the back of your neck. We know what handcuffs feel like. We don't want you to go through that, man. We don't want you to go through that, dude. I didn't, I didn't have enough handcuffs on for a whole lot of cats. Okay, I didn't stop through the jail. That shit is not cool. Bro. Fuck nobody. <laughs> oh no, we gotta go, Dusty. We got to go. I'm having flat. Right, my man, every Tuesday, I love you, man. It's always a pleasure, dude. Love you, too. Love all y'all in the chat room, folks. It's Lonzo, the Godfather of the West Coast Hip Hop. We are out of here like last year. Peace.